biggest problem with Rocket League, uh, currently, is the toxic players. But once in a while, a toxic player changes. There's usually so much going on with six players that it's hard to pinpoint how it happened. But one thing is for sure, no matter what state a person is in, watching a beautiful, clearly deliberate pass go to waste hurts. It hurts in a kind of primal way. Like watching an injured gazelle making its escape. I'll come back to this. I've wanted to make a video on toxic players for a long time, but most of it is very subtle. Trying to find obvious examples of very subtle things is almost the definition of a fool's errand. But I got very lucky recently, and I had two toxic players with me that largely seemed to be ignoring me and going after each other. And I had an opportunity to try to use what I've learned to get them into a cooperative game. Only one of these guys actually came into the game toxic, and he was just a dick to the other guy till he started acting that way too, which, you know, is understandable because, you know, it's never toxic when I'm doing it. Every time I behave that way, it's justified. And everybody thinks that. I chose this guy because he has a highly developed strategy designed to make his teammates look incompetent. And it comes essentially in two parts. When his teammates are, you know, at the other end of the field trying to score, he just writes that off and he's running around the backfield. It kind of looks like he's kind of covering them, but if you watch it, he, it's just like this kind of figure eight pattern, basically to depopulate all the boosts so his teammates won't be able to get to the ball very well. And he combines this with the other side of the strategy, which is passing it to the other team and forcing pinches that will send it to his end. Basically, it's all wrapped around trying to make everybody else look incompetent. As I said before, you almost never get to know the moment, but I think this time you do. I think this is the moment where, essentially, he saw me and the other guy cooperating, and a part of him wanted to come in out of the cold. He'd also seen me float up a few beautiful passes that nobody was there for. He's not engaging in cooperative play yet, but he is coming up and assisting us. He's not just sitting in back clearing out all the boosts and waiting for his chance to make us look stupid. It's just so fortuitous that he came up at the same time an opportunity arose and lets him knock it in the goal here. That was very lucky. Not that he made it, but that the opportunity was provided to him. Here's the moment where the guy reacting to the toxic guy accidentally passed to him, or maybe on purpose, but it doesn't really matter because from the perspective of the toxic guy, that was really meaningful. The last 90 seconds of this game was entirely different from the first three and a half minutes. It was like we were a team. It was, it was like we've been playing games together. We were like passing to each other. I mean, that one guy who was toxic still wasn't like super cooperative, but he was up there and he was literally passing and being defensive and he actually, he actually cleared out the ball so that the other team didn't score with a few seconds left. I guess if I had a takeaway from this, recognize the toxic play and get out. Don't be like me. You have no idea what's happened to my MMR. I developed an elaborate strategy for avoiding these types of people and then decided, let's do some outreach. Hey, thanks for listening, and if you enjoyed this story, please consider tipping your YouTuber with a like, share, subscribe, or a comment. Thanks a lot.